Hello, hello everybody, it's 10.35 p.m. Central Time on the 4th of May, 2023, Thursday here in the United States, getting ready to roll over into Friday again, already another end of a week. So uh, we're going to get going here, but uh, let me just warn you, I've got a little bit of allergy thing going on right now, so if I have to break off and take a drink of the coffee or sneeze or cough, just bear with me as we go through it. <laughs> uh, fun stuff, and we're still going through all these awesome backgrounds, by the way, that the Duchess made for us, in case you guys missed all that. Really cool stuff. She's adding more and more to the view. Let's turn on a display capture. Speaking of views, and get into the activity here in the West Pacific. We are on watch for large earthquake activity north of New Zealand, also large earthquake activity up here north of Japan from Hokkaido north into the Kuril Islands. So down in New Zealand, we have a fair amount of activity going on north up in the Kermadex, but down south, not much to really report on. I mean, we have some small activity going up into the three range, I'm expecting up to 7-ish, 7.0 plus, north of New Zealand and north of Japan. That has not happened yet, obviously. Now, in between the spots where we're watching, you see the pink-colored earthquakes from the past few days, two days. Here's the last day you'll be able to see from north of New Zealand in a path of fives going all the way across over to yesterday's quakes over at Afghanistan. Now, if we go and look at all the magnitudes, you'll see they're all about the same size from north of New Zealand all the way across over to Afghanistan. And the Stepping Stone Path bypasses the West Pacific. So let me go over and show you this on the USGS plate boundary map. Let me get a sip of my coffee while we're going along the way because I'm already having voice problems. Oh, man. <clears throat> <clears throat> Many Yoda moments to come as we go on through the update. So, let's recap. Series of 5.0 level activity going across all the way over into the Mideast and then down across over to the east by southeast all the way out to Point Nemo, which is the furthest point from land on either side on the whole planet, believe it or not, down here. And this is where they intend to crash the International Space Station when it ultimately comes down. And this is where they send a lot of rocket debris and other things to be targeted to come down to this area. I'm not saying that's what this is. I'm just saying here we are, Point Nemo, letter X, 5.3. 5.3 matters. We can trace the fracture zone back. Look, it goes to the west. Then it bends into under seamount volcanoes that go right back up to... The other sets of 5.3s, which struck 5.2, 5.1, 5.0, and a bunch of 5s, all right back at where the origin point is of this wave that's spreading out down to the east-southeast and all the way across over into the mid-east. And make note, 5.3 yesterday over at the plate boundary. Let's get the USGS, well, if I can even get it open, Let's get the USGS plate boundary map open, and I'll show you what moved here so you can understand. Again, this is for new people who don't know. We move in huge areas in the course of a day or two, and the spread goes, for instance, I just talked about it, down here at Point Nemo, back across, over, up, and across, and we're bypassing this bend in the plate right now. We're going literally underneath and over, to the edge of the Indo-Australian plate. Now, while that's going on down south, down in Australia, let's just take a look at the smaller earthquakes. I don't even know if they're still going to be on here. Well, a few of them are. Okay, there we go. You can see a few of the smaller earthquakes going across Australia. And uh, take a look. We're going up to near 3.0 at the center of the plate. Now, we're going to look for two magnitudes larger. We have about three days left to go in the watch for two magnitudes larger to strike down to the east southeast down by kangaroo island if we go two magnitudes larger obviously that takes us up to 4.8 so something in the upper four level low five level but i'm thinking probably upper four is going to be striking there however i was looking for an earthquake to strike up here on the arrow on the back side of the arrow and i have not seen any seismic activity reported on the back side of the arrow at all 
The Australians are very good about reporting their earthquakes. They aren't changing magnitudes and making it all weird or anything. So if it doesn't get reported, I, I trust them, and I trust, or at least I trust them more than my USGS or any of the other. So I would say if it's not reported, it didn't hit yet. But I'm looking for that. I'm looking for something like a 5 to strike up at the back end at the arrow on the northwest side of Australia, then a new 5 or 4.8 to strike down by Kangaroo Island. What else is going on? North Philippines started to move mid-range 5s. That's a pretty big outbreak taking place there however the size of the quakes the magnitudes i should say are not that big but the size of the outbreak the number of fours and fives taking place now let's just go back two days check it out look up to the north check it out see this same size stack broke out up north by okinawa just a few days ago so let's just recap here an outbreak took place now there's a stepping stone path connecting between and i hear in philippines an outbreak takes place. So something's going on down below the plate, which is connected to the next plate to the south, of course, which is the Indo-Australian plate. Spreading up to Japan, we're looking for a 7 on the north side of Japan. We're looking for that 7 down here at New Zealand. It has not happened yet, or north of New Zealand, I mean. Seeing a big quiet area for two days, three days, something like that, Across an area that's normally seismically prone, that's Java, Sumatra, Barren Island in the north, all the way to Myanmar. Now, word has reached me that I needed to check, and I didn't, needed to check the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center, which I normally check all the time. Let's go over and take a look. Let's hit refresh. Three hours, 12 minutes ago. Okay, here we go. Current feed. Now, I'm going to go down the list, and we're going to see if it's still on there. Barren Island showed up on the list with a 15,000-foot-high blast. We'll make note of the others, Manam and Papua New Guinea, Semeru in Indonesia, Manam again, 7,000-foot, not that big, Luatolo again in Indonesia. And when I say again, they're sometimes on the feed. But I want to go down and just see if Barren Island's still on the feed here. It was just from the day and a half, two days ago, so it might have already fallen off the two-day feed here. But I want to click on it if we've got it. We don't have it on the feed. Okay, all right. Well, you're just going to have to take my word for it. It was two days ago, Barren Island, 15,000-foot-high blast. Where? Where's Barren Island? Let me show you. Right in here. The Andaman Sea, or Andaman Sea, which is really just northwest of Sumatra, Indonesia, right up here. Now, the islands actually, I think, belong to India, believe it or not, or if they don't belong to India, the Indian waters or Indian claimed uh, one of the islands and their Barren Island erupted. Well, okay, so Barren Island erupted in the area where it's totally quiet. Now we go back down to the east by southeast and Mount Semeru also erupting in here in the area that's quiet. I don't like quiet when this kind of level activity is going on around the area. So I didn't issue a warning for it in my original update from four or five days ago where we issued a forecast for the West Pacific. I'm going to issue it now, which is a new mid-range six, something in the six range. Most likely we'll be breaking out right in the middle here next to Sumatra going down towards Java. So the volcano already erupted on the north side of Sumatra, northwest side. You've got this seismic and volcanic going on over to the east. Let me mention Manam also erupting over here where the arrow is, or right now, I'm sorry, right over here next to where the arrow is. And Luatolo erupting, which is right in here by East Timor. So if you add in the eruptions on all the sides, and then you've got the seismic on all the sides, and it's gone quiet, I'm going to take it the next magnitude up, a full magnitude increase. If we're at 5.5 now across the board and Indonesia and Philippines going up to Japan, that means a 6.5, one magnitude larger, the cumulative total of everything around it, basically. What we're doing is we're just going to add up all these earthquakes all the way around here, and we're going to get a 6.5 right here in the middle on the edge. The middle of the edge of what? This, this red line. Let me show you. So right in the middle, new 6.5, because all the way around it, it shifted. Even down to the south and over and over into the Indian Ocean. It's now quiet, and that's not good when you're seismically prone. Quiet isn't good, okay? Let's go up into China. So China got hit, and it took a week longer. Well, six days. Six days longer on this round of activity that we were looking for. You can cross off 
Bangladesh into India. You can cross off China at the, what is that, Myanmar border, and then China in central China at the bend. It's a series of fives, well, fours and fives, going around the bend of the Indo-Australian plate. Let me take you and show you. So here we are, Bangladesh. I mentioned Bangladesh a few days back, did I not? It's, how often do you hear about Bangladesh, right? So Bangladesh, Myanmar, China, bend of the plate. Fives going across the whole thing. If we add it all together, it equals about a 5.9, uh, upper 5 or a low 6. And I'll just say it, that's pretty much the activity. It's a half magnitude off from what we're looking. We were looking for a single 6.5 to strike at Myanmar. And I mentioned Bangladesh. Everybody from Bangladesh all the way over to central China needed to be warned. Well, here we are. Let's go back and compare. This all hit in the last day and a half. So obvious. Going around the bend of the plate. Now, as we go around the bend of the plate... The same sized earthquakes, by the way, if you take this 5.2 plus this 5.0 plus the 4.9 plus the, equals 5.3 to 5.4, that matters because then we get a 5.3 to 5.4 out at the tip of the arrow up here. Let's recap. I know it sounds like a lot. Guys, big activity coming around the bend of the plate going up into China. We were looking for that. Now it flowed over to the west, and now we got the same sized activity. The cumulative total of everything that was at the bend went over to the west like a flood. And now it's there. And it broke there yesterday. Over to the west, we have a stepping stone path of earthquakes going across, but this is the last day. Notice anything? There's another open stepping stone area where we should have a, a, something to step on if we're going down a path, and this is a missing rock in between two stones. You would see it. You'd say, oh, that's an open area that needs to be filled in with a new stepping stone. Well, in this case, we have 5.3 coming across. We have 4s, 4.9. Let's just call that a 5. A 5 out in Turkey. So we have a 5 in Turkey, 5.3 back up at Afghanistan. And then right down here in the middle in Iran, we should get something like a 5.5 or greater strike in the middle between the two around the bend of the plate, which is this, the red line. So 5.3 over here, 5.0 over here in between the two. Middle point, 5.4. Cumulative total of both. As we go further over to the west, Istanbul was struck. A new, well, right next to it, I should say. Istanbul's at the strait up here, and we're right next to it. I, would, I don't know the name of the strait there. Let's get the name of the strait. Oh, wait, they don't have it here on the... Okay, we're east of Thessalonica. Thessaloniki? Really? Is that how it's said now? Or west of Bursa. Again, right in the middle of the strait. That's a significant earthquake in the area overall. I mean, anytime you get a four or greater, it's enough to cause damage in these structures, which are stone stacks and are block. We've seen twos and threes take down buildings in Italy, for instance, just as an example. What else happened? Poland got hit. So, check Poland off the list. We had warned Poland, Ukraine... And now Poland's been hit. It's, we're a half magnitude off. I was looking for fours to go around the outside edge of the plate, including here in Poland and west, southwest Poland. And what did we get? We got a 3.5. Next stop is the North Sea. And I've got a warning going here. We flopped it two weeks ago when I warned east of here at my people in uh, Holland. Instead, it hit out here and by Norway, and it was what, with 3.0 level activity, and then we didn't see anything get reported at the North Pole. Well, that's changed. Now our X marks the spot has been struck by a mid-range 4, and the flow is going around the outside edge of Europe, obviously. A new deep earthquake down below Italy, and Italy is on watch for up to 6.0 level activity, 7 to 10 day watch off the deep earthquake. Let me show this to you. We have not canceled the watch or the warning. There it is, deep 5.2, from the first, we are three days in on a seven to ten day watch. In other words, you got a week to go for up to your six, 6.2 in central Italy. So I want you to be ready. Please, guys, please listen. There was a deep earthquake down below the Tyrrhenian Sea, right where this earthquake is raised high off the planet here. And we look for seven to ten days for a shallower, larger earthquake event. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it's smaller. I hope it spreads out. Hope, hope, hope. In science, we don't like to hope much. Past examples have showed us that when a deep earthquake strikes below the Tyrrhenian Sea, 
we tend to see a flare-up on the plate boundary next to it. Let me show you. Deep earthquake below this J shape here on the plate boundary at the Tyrrhenian Sea. Then we see activity flare up along the plate boundary. Something pushes up on the underside, then it starts to spread out and over towards Gibraltar and up towards North Italy where the plate boundary dead ends into the Swiss Alps. So watch out for it. We're three to four days in on a seven to 10 day watch. And again, if it's like a flood, if you guys saw a storm and you lived along a river, you would pay attention to it. And we hope that the flood doesn't fully dump all into the river valley, that it gets absorbed somewhat or goes off in other directions. But when you live along a river, you pay attention to the storms. This is like a seismic storm and you're along the river of seismic flow. Okay? And it's coming up from down below. Instead of from dropping in from up above like a storm and then flowing downhill, this is coming up from down below and then it's flowing out and away following the river and the river valley, if you will. The river valley is the plate boundary. All right, the red line. Okay, recapping. Italy, keep watch. Up to 6.2 next week in seven days or less. We're watching north of New Zealand for up to 7 point something and north of Japan for up to 7 point something. And 6.5 new warning issued today by me for this. Well, the warnings have all been issued by me, but a new day, new warning depending on an area where we're watching. Let's go over to Central and South America, where we see an increase in the Caribbean going across Central America, Mexico, and over to the east, and now you can check Dominican Republic off the list. Let's just get all the smaller earthquakes out of there. There we go. So Eastern Dominican Republic got struck mid-range 4, and then a near 5 struck east of Puerto Rico, fulfilling our forecast for the East Caribbean. Let me show you what's going on here. So over in the Caribbean in the United States, well bordering on the United States. To the south, you've got Cuba, you've got Laurentia, the plate of Laurentia goes down and meets up at the red line. Anyway, right along the red line, that's where the energy's flowing. It's going from the Cocos Plate here at the Pacific, across Guatemala, over to the east, all the way to the east side. And we get the same sized earthquakes breaking out in Central America. Then they go across, and the wave goes across, and then we get a new outbreak over on the east side. Now, there's something going on down in Mexico I'd like to bring up again, and I showed it in my last update. I'm going to show it again. So we're going to go over to regional sectors. We're going to go down and look in Mexico again. We're going to look at visible satellite view, and we're going to turn on 200 images to see the whole day. We're going to look from the start of the day. So here we are at sunrise this morning. Terminator line of the sun, so to speak, coming across. Now, we're going to move this forward throughout the day, and there's our cloud cover, but... I uh, watch throughout the day here. Down below the clouds. Now, you might not be able to see it very well. Maybe I should turn on shortwave infrared so we can see little black dots here on the screen, which you may have to full screen this to really see it. Like, for instance, over here, they're kind of hard to see, but these are heat signatures from fires which are taking place across all of Mexico. And I shouldn't just say all of Mexico. They're down here by the hundreds across the Yucatan Peninsula, going across the borders down into Guatemala and across even further down to Honduras, Belize, and further down off screen uh, to the east, southeast, Nicaragua, and so forth. And there's just tens of thousands of fires that are breaking out across these areas. Now, to see them, the best way uh, is on true color view and to look at it visually to see the smoke kick up throughout the day, which right in here, we've got a bunch of storm activity. But you can see out over to the east, over in the Gulf of Mexico, how hazy that is. And that haze is not haze. That is smog from the smoke. So, tremendous amount of fire activity breaking out down across Mexico and Central America. At the same time, we're seeing a seismic flow go across the area. I just have to bring it up. It hasn't stopped. We have people that are down in Mexico that have reported in that these are being reported as wildfires. Wildfires, okay? And there's something else worth mentioning while we're here looking at the storms. I'm just going to bring you in and show you a long wave infrared and show you our storm activity breaking out across the United States. And there's just something a little bit suspicious about the spacing on some of these storms as they developed uh, across the whole United States. We had 
some very odd spacing on the storms. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 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 four. And if you look over here on the East Coast, one, two, three, four, that's getting a little odd. I'm just saying it. Uh, this might not have anything to do with earthquakes as opposed to weather modification or man made systems, but it's just getting weird, okay? You're going to have to start paying attention to weird things like this in case you don't know about owning the weather by 2025. Uh, that's a legitimate thing that's being done now. Anyway, we'll get into the seismic on this because there is there there is a, somewhat of a connection between the two energy-wise going through the plate. And we do see seismic develop down below large low-pressure systems that are coming through the areas around the world. A big tropical storm, for instance, we can see big earthquake activity down below it, and uh, that's electrically induced. It's not waves crashing on the shore causing an earthquake for 20 kilometers down in the crust, okay? It's big 7.0 earthquake strikes below a cyclone as it's passing over Japan. It's because of electrical potential being released or, to, or put into the plate, maybe. Anyway, let's go to the United States over here on the West Coast. <laughs> Uh, let me get another sip of my coffee. I'm about ready to sneeze or cough into the microphone. Snoffing, which is a little bit of sneezing and coughing. Okay, all right. Now let's go and take a look at the smaller earthquakes. Go see what's happening. So I guess I'll start on the West Coast. Then we're going to work our way over to Virginia, who got hit by mid-range 2 today, right at the Kentucky-Virginia border. That's a change. It's first earthquake in Virginia in many months' time, I think, or at least in many, many weeks. And we're watching Virginia really close, and now it's got a 2.5. That's about a magnitude and a half under what I'm looking for. I'm looking for up to a 4. If, we're, if we went one magnitude larger on that, 3.5, I'd just check it off the list and say, there it is. We were in Virginia for a 4, a pretty rare 4, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go look at the West Coast. So up here in the Northwest, we've got a line of earthquakes coming down the edge of the North American Craton. Goes and dead ends into Yellowstone there. You see a little stack of earthquakes in Northwest Wyoming right here. That's where Yellowstone National Park is. Now you'll notice there's a 3.0 earthquake over in Idaho along with a cluster. Now that three, the biggest of the bunch, even though there's a line and a stack going down to Yellowstone in the park, the three that I have highlighted here on the screen is actually related to the magma chamber down below for Yellowstone. Even though Yellowstone's that far away over to the east, the feeder and the deepest part of the center of the magma chamber of Yellowstone is below central Idaho here. These earthquakes are up above it, up above the magma chamber. So there's something going on in the magma chamber. Now, there's not going to be an eruption anytime soon. We would see tens of thousands of earthquakes, not just tremors. There's, Of course, there's hundreds if not thousands of tremors per day in Yellowstone as the magma shifts and you can see them on the uh, spectros or seismos whatever they have going there and they look like little signatures they look like little earthquakes and they even assign magnitudes to them however they're tremors in the magma okay and now these are earthquakes that are spreading across the craton these are actual cracks in the plate above it actual earthquakes so what's going on at Yellowstone I would say it's breathing again. As the energy, as the waves come in, these very low frequency waves pass through the plate. Let me show you. Look at this. Look at the craton diagram here. Look in the northwest up in Idaho. See the black arrow? See where it points? Black arrow points to Yellowstone. So looking at the diagram and comparing to the quakes, it's pretty obvious. The quakes are going in the same way we have the arrows. Now, I made this graphic nine years ago. Ten years ago now. Ten years ago, I made this graphic in particular on the screen. I haven't changed it at all. This is the way the earthquakes go down across the edge of the craton. So Yellowstone is on the edge of the craton. The craton goes down through Texas and back up to the east coast through Virginia. We have a flow going across the craton. Now get this. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, in the news. Well, I guess I need to go show it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to get a... Uh, a window open here, and I guess I just need to get another. I, I'll just search it here. We'll search the web. We're going to search Russia, Yellowstone, 
uh, invasion. Let's see if that comes up. Yeah, look, one day ago on the Telegraph, one day ago. Now, people at the Telegraph are tuned in to me in case you didn't know. And I made a post about Yellowstone a day ago. So that's really weird, right? I make the post on Yellowstone and then Telegraph, who's following me and puts out Frank stuff and all that, the other earthquake forecaster, the Dutch earthquake forecast. Okay, so Telegraph's trolling, but we know that. But look what this story says. Putin ally claims U.S. wants to take over Russia in case Yellowstone volcano erupts. Here's the story, and you guys can come over and read it. I don't believe this, but this is in the news. And Mr. Patrushev cited alleged research suggesting that the Yellowstone megavolcano in Wyoming might erupt soon. What is this? I didn't click on this. When is this from? December of 2013. A new study. A 10-year-old study. A new study. Research. No, he didn't say a new study. Research suggesting that it could erupt soon. Okay. I I added that in on my own creation. (laughs) It's not a new study, but they said it's okay. uh, Whatever. The fact that it's in the news at all is freaking bizarre beyond all measure because I'm the only person talking about Yellowstone aside from the regular Yellowstone people that talk about Yellowstone every day. The only reason I'm talking about Yellowstone, the only reason I showed it in the satellite view a few days ago, is because of the evaporation happening above it and the fires down in Mexico. I'm looking along the edge of the North American Great Don. Down through Texas, look where it goes. Right at the border of Mexico. Mexico, all fires going all the way down through all Central America, all burning suddenly. Now, if there's any fires up to the north, up in Canada, along the edge of the Craton, then we would need to pay attention to the center of the Craton, which is Yellowstone. Just by chance, right? Yellowstone's at the center of that, right? Now, are there fires up in beautiful Canada? Well, Yes, I can already answer that question. I went and looked. I haven't even told you about this yet. I'm going to show you now. But they're up right along the edge of the Craton up in Canada. And to show that to you, we're going to go to regional sectors. We're going to click on BC and Alberta. And we're going to go to True Color View and see these black spots here. These are sudden fire outbreaks that have taken place in the past couple days. And they're big. These are thousands and thousands of acres now. They're, that's uh, To put it in perspective, a five-acre fire next to my house that was burning and they had to get the fire department out to put out a control. It was control burn gone wrong. Didn't even show up on this just to put it in perspective. So look, so look at our fires up here and I'll point them out to you going across where the east side of the edge of the Craton. It's indisputable on clear day too. watch. There they are. Look at them. They just pop out of nowhere. And then we get nighttime coming through so you can't really see them. But they're right there. And I can even turn on the natural color fire view and we might get the glow of the fires as they break out yeah so at least one of them up here actually visible glow from space that's how big it is thousands and thousands of acres that was yesterday going into today here's today here's the most current image now watch this look at that looks like a nuke look at that you see that nothing do you see it right that lets you know how high it's going over here on the right hand side you see how high that's going it's going stratospheric high look at our other fires insanity right there insane number of fires breaking out along the edge of the craton up in canada now wait a second i just showed them down in mexico it's indisputable we'll go in and look at a close angle at the yucatan peninsula one more time On the natural color fire view, you can even see, you might not be able to see it, but all these little specks here on the screen are different fires being reported. But throughout the day-to-day, right there, you could, hopefully, if you're full screen, you'll be able to see how many there are. There's like one, two, three, four, five. They're out in the water, too. In case you don't know, these are out in the water as well. Take a look. And it's not up for debate. I'll turn on shortwave infrared so you can maybe see the black spots out in the water. Here we go. Look how many there are. Look at this. 
So right here, we have tens of thousands of them going all at once. And the two out in the water are right here. And they'll be flickering back and forth as I move my mouse. I'll put it on there. And again, you might have to be full screen to see it. But they're there. Out in the ocean. With tens of thousands of them all the way across all of Mexico going up and following the edge of the North American Craton. So now that you've seen Canada and now that you've seen Mexico and a just freakish number of fires breaking out across these plate features, let's go look at the United States and see what's going on across, let's just say, here. From Canada, down through Wyoming, down through Utah, down through Arizona and New Mexico, down through Texas, down in New Mexico. I have not looked today, so I don't know. But we're going to go look at the Four Corners area and just see if there's anything going on worth looking at firewise. I'm going to do the true color view first and we're going to go throughout the day today to see. Yes. Yes. Okay. So a few things going on here that you might not see right here. Let me just bring it forward. There is smoke here that's kind of hard to see. And up in northern Arizona fire also. What about Utah? It's so hard to see with all the cloud cover. Let's go look at shortwave infrared and get a sub-regional view on the area so it won't be so hard to see. Okay. Black dot down here. A little bit easier to see if you're on a full screen. So yes, we do have fires now in Arizona. Here's throughout the day today. Here's our fire up here to the north, right there. You can barely see it, but it's a black dot there. We have one in New Mexico here, over on this side of the screen. Up. And we have another one over in eastern Arizona in the, in the Geronimo Volcanic Field. Here. Geronimo Volcanic Field right there. That's where our earthquakes keep breaking out over and over again there. That's where the professional had showed up from several years ago and said there was no volcano and accused me of fraud. And then we found out it's the actual middle of the Geronimo volcanic field, and he was wrong. Now, over here in New Mexico, same thing. Two of them. One, two. We have three. Now we have three and a fourth. We have four fires going across just this area alone in an area where you should not be burning anything, and they're going to have all kinds of control burns uh, not going on now. All kinds of control burns that you would expect, I don't know, maybe when it's uh, rainy and not extremely windy. It also looks like there may be something going on in central Arizona as well, right here. Okay, I'm looking at each spot because we have to know at this point. It's not up for debate. There's something going on. So what's going on with all the fire suddenly? Uh, let's see. Going across Utah, do we have anything from last night or this morning? I don't see anything in Utah. Let's go to the north. Up into Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Just regular clouds. Well, regular, right? What's regular? Regular is a setting on my washing machine. That's about it. That's regular convective... Updraft. Oh, wait. Hold on. Over to the east. Let's just make sure about this. Yeah. Okay. Coming out of Canada up here on the very far northeast edge, coming down this way, we've got the fires. You can see some smoke kick off from some of those. And it looks like there's some over in Nebraska. Wow, okay, let's go over and take a look. Go over across Colorado, Nebraska, and Kansas. A little hard to see, can't see shit. Okay. All right, not going to be able to see anything out of that. So I'm left guessing at the middle. And I'm taking this amount of time to show you because our earthquakes are coming down, going down across through Colorado, 
down through Texas, making it bend right at the Mexico border and going up to the east. Remember, our fires are right down here, going down to the south. Fires are up here in Arizona, stopping at Utah. Don't have anything in the middle I can see right now. And we'd pick back up going all the way across the edge of the Great Dome with fires up to the north. That's odd. I would say the fires are being caused by some kind of rising heat. I don't know if it's, you know, it's not going to be lava or magma. It's not going to be magma coming up, you know, out of oil wells or something. It would be some kind of release of heat coming up along the edge of the Craton, which then the fires break out along the edge of the Craton. One more time, the Craton. Now look at Colorado. Do you know where Colorado is? It's the middle black arrow coming in from the west coast, pointing over to Colorado, where the tip of the arrow goes into Colorado there, in case you don't know where Colorado is. And let me show you. Southern Colorado got hit down next to Trinidad, mid-range three, at the oil pumping operations, right next to the oil pumping operations. We had warned Southern Colorado we were looking for this. It's not every week or even every month that you get hit down here. In case you don't know, here's Trinidad. Earthquake striking next to Trinidad and to the south at New Mexico. Our border is right here where my mouse is. And I'll zoom in and just show you. I mean, these are all oil and gas pumping operations. I'm not against oil and gas. I have to say this over and over again. People mistake me showing the oil and gas pumps, showing the spots where they've drilled. And, you know, they think that I'm against oil and gas because I'm talking about the quakes that are happening at the areas where they drilled. And I'm not. But when you drill this amount, you can expect, like, a perforation in a piece of cardboard that if you put pressure on the side of this area, that it's going to fold in that area. And that's what's going on. We're folding on the edge of the craton. That's why they're, well, I mean, it's always done this. It's naturally folding on the edge of the craton. The wave is going through the area, and then we drilled it. So now we're going to break there as opposed to other spots that are just natural where the wave would flow through. As we go down to Texas, we make a hard bend and go up through Oklahoma. Texas has a warning for up to 5.0 level activity. We're currently at 3. So I'm 100 times less power currently. Where, that's where we are from where we're looking for it to go. We're looking for it to go up to 5. For Oklahoma, we're looking for this to go up to 4.5. And same thing, we're at the 2.5 range. So we're two magnitudes under across Texas and Oklahoma. That's going to change as we see the arrival of the wave. The wave is coming in from the northwest, and we have a warning going in Northern California for up to 5.5. All these warnings expire in four days. So we have four more days to go for California, for Texas, for Oklahoma. Now, while all that's going on, the stepping stone path of earthquakes has reached over to Virginia, right at the border, right next to it, 2.5. And this is 1.5 magnitude under what I'm looking for as well. So it's pretty obvious. The wave that's coming across Texas, Oklahoma, the New Madrid seismic zone, and Virginia, the spacing on it, first of all, is like a wave in an ocean, almost perfectly spaced, just like those storms I showed you, actually. Cue up the twilight zone music. You think about that. So, we're looking for this to take a big step up. A hundred times more power to come across the plate. It should all arrive soon. We're looking for Northern California to break. That being said, let's go in and take a look at the earthquakes coming in from the far northwest now. So, what's going on up in here? Well, a few explosions, first of all, over to the east. Pretty odd, getting a little weird. Let's go take a look at it. Let's look at the biggest. Let's take this 1.5 this explosion. Now, I just want to see what's there. I'm not going to make any kind of big preachy statements about locations or anything like that, but we do want to see what's next to this new outbreak, even though outbreak of explosions, I mean. Outbreak of explosions. What's exploding out here? Well, oh wow, this place is called BB. Anything else here nearby worth mentioning? Worth blowing up? Do we have a quarry here at the epicenter? Looks like we've got a quarry there. That's pretty interesting. Normally, we don't. And normally, they're listed as quarry blasts. Okay, well, 
I would bring up the electrical generation going on down here to the south and the line of earthquakes that's led up to this. But we'll just leave this all right where it is with that whole explosion thing going on there all across the area. Maybe they're doing some work. What about over next to the border where our fires take a place? Let's take a look. Let's go see. Wow, another one. You know, I didn't know this one was an explosion. Let's go see what's going on. Sure seems like this is the time to get out the dynamite and start detonating. Spokane, Washington. Spokane. Spokane, Dutch. And here we are. We have another quarry. Everybody's about blasting today. Ah, maybe the state just approves it one day a week. What about up here? Let's go along the border. I mean, why not? Winthrop, Washington. Now, this one... It's not an explosion. What about the others? We'll get. Let's just take a look. Well, this one's not an explosion either. So right along the border, we don't have explosions along the border. We've got earthquakes, explosions going down at these quarries. Okay. Anything here worth mentioning? What's this? Sweet Grass Butte. Why is that marked with a historical place marker? going on there historical landmark that sure seems an odd place to put a historical landmark and a microwave tower unless of course we're dealing with some kind of larger structure and when I say larger structure I really mean Tartarian larger structure if we zoom out we find some weird feature here I'm going to just laugh but you know what we don't want to take the time to do that right now do we anyway historical landmark up there on the top I don't know microwave tower next to it that's suspicious that's the weird part is there something here I'm missing oh no way really so right here in ha 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 First of all, with the 666 coordinates, right? Okay, I just realized that. But check it out. Look at this. How long is this? Hold on. 20 miles. So help me God, if it's 20 miles on the other side, we got a real problem, guys. Oh, shit. It is. It is. It is. That's why there's historical landmark in the... Look, look, I'll bring it down here to the south. And what is it? 15 and 15, 30, 20 and 20, 30, 15 and 15? Dear God. Please help us here. I mean, come on. You're going to have to tell me that's a chance to bring it right down to here. And it's 12 miles. And here, it's 12 miles. Spare me, man. Okay, look. The reason there's a historical landmark in the, sh in the middle of this shape here is because this shape here was made a long time ago by somebody else. It's made out of mountains, and it's huge, and it's hidden in the mountains itself. Now, out here at the pinnacle tip of it, they built a town. And at the pinnacle tip of the tip, look what we've got. A quarry! Now, what would you do if I told you that this is all over the world this way? And it's hidden, and it's a giant structure built by people from a long time ago. And that thing is 20 miles long. And there's earthquakes down below it. And that's the only reason I'm even finding these darn things, is because there's earthquakes that are striking down below these places. This update has turned into uh, another Dutch Sense update. Let's just put it that way. Let me just sip my coffee. It's so annoying sometimes. Whatever, man. All right. The rest of the quakes are down to the southwest. We're down at Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. There's nothing I should have to mention there. Actually, we're not at Mount St. Helens. We're around Mount St. Helens. That's a change from where we were, which is we were at Mount St. Helens. We're all the way around it. Not going to even bother looking them up. Got way off the rails. Let's go over into Oregon. Oh, it... another explosion. See, this is why there aren't a lot of earthquake forecasters and people that report on the quakes. Because you're going to start to run into stuff if you do it daily. You'll start to run into stuff day after day after day after day. And your viewers will get suspicious if you do not cover it. They will realize that you're shilling for a system or something if you do not cover these things. 
start to find this stuff all over the place. Okay, what's here? First of all, let's go turn on our places, borders, labels, volcanoes, pretty much everything. See if there's anything here. Milton Freewater. Got an explosion there. Is it another quarry? First of all, I guess. Another quarry. Got the explosion there. Oh. Oh, 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 we're right next to the Hanford facility again. With all its nukes. All the nuclear material, I mean. Anyway, we're at the Walla Walla location just to the east at that quarry. Uh, again, if I see a quarry there, that's somewhat relieving to see, but it doesn't mean much because those quarries, like I showed you, can be at the pinnacle tip of something. Something that they're quarrying out to begin with. Something that's odd and in a certain symmetrical shape that shouldn't exist. Unless it's been built. Are you kidding me? Okay, all right, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. There's another one right there. I, I'm not even going to go into it. Let's go over to the west. Government Camp, Oregon. Wow. What a way, what, what a place to jump to after that, right? Like, I'm like, I'm done. I'm out of here. There's another one. Show you a government base in the middle of one. Now we go to government camp right below the volcano. So here's government camp right here, the town. There's Mount Hood, the Strato Volcano. And look at the power lines. We got the power lines going right down across over and next to the volcano and then up to the north. Pretty great way to do the, the power lines next to the volcanoes. Pretty interesting to see that a lot. When you could go anywhere with the power lines, I wonder why you would run power lines over areas where there's large electromagnetic disturbances. Let's go down to Burns, Oregon, where there's another explosion. I don't know if you're going to want to be exploding things at a place called Burns at a time where there's high wind and dry conditions. Let's go see what's going on here. Is there anything worth mentioning? Is there another quarry here at this explosion site? Is If there is, at least, you know, we'll have a reason. Unless it's a person out there doing some kind of blasting. Look at that. It's just kind of off the road there. Burns, Oregon. Diamond Craters is there. Is there anything else worth mentioning here? Well, there is in the overall area, but I don't want to get into that right now. So the Diamond Craters are right next to here. You guys remember, and I want to say the... Ma yeah, there it is. The Malheur National Forest. Do you guys remember this place? All the nut jobs went up there and all the conspiracy theory people went up there. Up to Mall Hewer. For the bird sanctuary that they took over. But it was like it was like Obama thing. A bunch of weirdos went up there and took over the bird sanctuary. It was a giant psyop to try and get a bunch of weirdos to go out into the middle of nowhere where the government could round them up and shoot them. A bunch of shill YouTube channels got involved and got their viewers to go up there to go defend freedom at the frickin' wildlife reserve. It was so stupid. Anyway, let's go over along the coast. Wow. So an earthquake in Mao here, huh? Sure. Let's carry on. Let's go on down to the south by southwest. Another explosion. Man, must be great to not have any earthquakes and all you get is explosions. No wonder you guys don't ever get any notices for quakes. It's just all explosions. They're blowing stuff up left and right. There it is. They're doing more quarrying all over the place. Quarry, quarry, quarry. You know what's really weird, though, is there's no explosions reported across the rest of the country. That's super weird. How do you explain that, guys? No explosions across the rest of the country. All explosions up here in Washington and Oregon. I don't know. I guess it's chance. Kind of like the storms. Let's go down into California, where we're watching for a 5 to 5.5, most likely 5.5, to strike on land or very close to it, Northern California, Eureka. Then... We're looking for a spread to go down across the rest of California and over to the east, like I said, over to Texas. 
There's a line of earthquakes that goes down across the coast, through the Bay Area, through the creeping section, dead ends down a park field. There's also a line of earthquakes that comes in from the northwest, goes across California diagonally as well, to the east by southeast. We dead end into the nuke test sites down here in South Nevada, but these are not explosions. You go look these up, they're actual earthquakes getting reported. And we go back up to the north, and both lines of earthquakes point. Here, let me get all the numbers out of here. Look at it. It's literally like a river going around California, where this is like the middle or a block or an island in the river. We're going down the San Andreas. We're going across over to the east. We come back down and around through Ridgecrest, and we focus back in on Southern California. You see it, right? This is the last two days' worth of earthquake. Now, the rest of the flow goes over to the east, like I said, over to Texas, and over to the east coast, over the, all the way to Maine and Virginia, for instance, like I said earlier. So the only thing missing now is a new five in Northern California. That's all we're waiting for at this point. And once that hits, I'll issue a new forecast, and we'll be in for the next week. Back to it, though. We're waiting for the big earthquakes in the West Pacific. They have not hit yet. If they don't hit, it's a big, big strikeout for me if we don't see the earthquake activity we're expecting at all. So it may get down to the last day, but I mean, I think we're here. I, we have the spread of fives going across. It's going all the way over to the Mideast, and it's going down to Point Nemo. So, I mean, come on, right in the middle here is where our big stress is taking place. That's where our big deep earthquakes took place. I have not checked on the solar storm activity, so I don't know what's going on with the sun. I probably should pay attention more to that. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm sure you guys will tell me somehow if there's a giant incoming blast from the sun or a strong solar wind. Until then, though, we just watch the seismic, the deep earthquakes show up after the solar zone. I did not mention Hawaii. Hawaii is looking for 5.0 level activity to come back. We're watching down along the coast, down back by Pahala again. It's no change in location. Right now, you're at 3.7. I'm a magnitude off. If that was 4.7, I'd check you off the list. Again, I want you for an upper 4 to low 5. But this is 3.7. This is an upper 3 to low 4. So the wave is coming in. It's hitting now. You see the earthquake, 3.7. There's more. More coming from the north. From up here. It's going to be going down, across, and into Hawaii. Then, out and over to Baja, following the fracture zone. The wave going to travel right down and hit Hawaii. Five is going to hit there. Go over to the east. Five should hit over at the Baja Peninsula as well. All right, that's your update, guys. You know, look, we go through times of go time. This is what we would call go time. I said this in my last update a few days back with Mexico and the fires going across Central America. Well, now you're going to have to explain to me 100,000 fires in four different countries. It's insane. And on clear days, without people being, you'd have to talk. You'd have to say there's hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of people that are in on it, or certainly thousands and thousands of people that would have to be all simultaneously starting fires at the same time. It's insane. It's not. That's not possible. So we can rule out arson. We can rule out lightning strikes. We can rule out farmers burning their fields, since several of these are getting into the tens of thousands of acres and uncontrollable, viewable from space. One more time, a five-acre fire next to my house didn't show up at all on the satellite. So these are big, and they're all over the place along the edge of where the plate would shift. The only thing missing now is for us to fill in across Utah, one state across from all the way up in North Canada to all the way down through Central America. There's one state that needs to get filled in with fires for it to be connected all the way across. And you can't tell me it's dry time everywhere. So, look, we, we still have snow on the mountains in many of the areas. And not just the mountains. Mountains and foothills still have snow on them in many of the intermountain states in the west coast of the United States going up into Canada, covered in snow still. So for there to be these huge fires break out while you're still dealing with uh, rain and, and snow, it's, that's insane. So the plate would be shifting and that would be what's releasing the heat. The plate is shifting. We know it is because look at the earthquakes. It's matching the craton. And that's just the United States and Central America. If I had access to all the stuff internationally, 
maybe we'd be able to figure it out internationally on the fires as well. I'm not saying all fires are caused by plate shifting. I'm just saying the ones that are breaking out along the edge of the plate as the plate is shifting most likely are caused by that. Could even be that rocks shift and things actually move and you know, flint strikes shale or shale strikes shale or flint strikes flint. And next thing you know, you get a spark and an outbreak and a fire naturally from just shifting falling rocks or something that fall down a hillside. Could be even something as simple as that. But I would think it would be Thousands of acre fires would turn up from heat releases down in the plate that would come up hundreds and hundreds, you know, three or four hundred degrees by the time it gets out to the uh, surface, ignite some roots and some trees deep down below, a few dozen feet down on the ground, burns up. Nobody even notices at first. Smoke starts showing up out of nowhere. Nobody even knows where it's coming from. Then it comes up out of the ground from the roots or something. I don't know. It's just a guess, but it's to, to try and say that it's just n- some kind of natural outbreak of fires everywhere it just doesn't make sense unless you want to say that it's the plate shifting it's the only thing that could do it naturally i think lightning couldn't do it and then you'd have to just fall back on arson and there would have to be an army of arsonists out there doing it non-stop 24 hours a day and traveling across whole countries doing it you can't say control burns because it's going across multiple countries where they don't do control burns in many cases and it's not control burns when it's uh, out of control, tens of thousands of acres and seen from satellite. So, you guys, I'll keep watch. If I see anything else, I'll let you know. But we've seen this happen before when the plate goes into overdrive shifting. The fires breaking out across the plate. We've seen this many, many, many times before. All right. Let's just remind everybody. Do you have an earthquake plan? Do you know what to do when an earthquake strikes? You need to take shelter underneath a table or a desk. It's basic. Internationally, you are recommended to go outside of buildings, depending on what kind of structure you're in. So if you're in a stone stack structure, cinder block or brick, you would start to make your way out. But if you're in a regular building frame, you would take shelter underneath a table or a desk. If you're in a skyscraper or in a big mall like this, I wouldn't want to be in there, but I'd be taking shelter underneath something as opposed to trying to run for the door and go outside. Because your chances of getting hit by something falling from much higher up are much greater than sheltering in place, of course, which is what you're protecting yourself from. Get underneath a table or a desk, all right? Now, after the earthquake, you need to have an emergency kit. Please hear me out, guys. You need to have this kit set up ahead of time somewhere where you can get to it easy. A backpack, a bag, something easily grabbable, and it's got a change of clothes, a set of shoes, flashlight, batteries, all the things that you would need to get yourself through a few days. So have a plan and be prepared. Don't be scared. If you're scared, you make bad decisions. People make bad decisions when they're scared. However, if you're prepared and you're watching the earthquakes come your way, you won't be caught off guard, like over in Italy. You, you know there's a deep earthquake down below Italy. You know that usually results in something up above it. And so, when something up above the deep earthquake happens, within a week, you're the one who's not caught off guard totally. When it hits, you're more having this moment like, there it is, as opposed to, oh my God, an earthquake, what's happening? It's like knowing when a storm is coming. Versus just walking outside and seeing the skies black and you had no preparation. All your windows are open and everything's sitting out. Okay, all right. I'm not trying to lecture you. And I am taking you through all these wonderful backgrounds that the Duchess has made for us. And this is what you get to see on the live stream. If you watch on Twitch, I try to keep the stream going. As Whenever I have an internet connection, I keep the stream going. And we put backgrounds on just so people don't get bored of looking at the same scene over and over and over again. Now we've got almost an infinite number of choices from the Duchess. And she has done her, over, outdone herself in many ways. Okay, all right, let's sign off. And I'm going to record this as a video. It's, it stopped recording, actually. It's been recording the whole time. And we will upload this over to YouTube. Please be safe. Have a plan and be prepared. Much love, guys. Peace out.